let's get going. Respondent conditioning. Respondent procedures or respondent applications. So let's take a look at this stuff. The reflex, right? So let's not forget that with, with classical conditioning, also known as respondent conditioning, what we're really talking about here is the modification of reflexes. Um, so this is not voluntary behavior, okay? Up until this point in the quarter, we've been talking about voluntary behavior. We've been talking about operant conditioning. Now, for a little bit here, we're going to talk about respondent conditioning. The next set of the next lecture you're going to get is going to be about the combination of those things um, and how you can how those things interact. But right now, we're going to look at how you can use respondent conditioning uh, to modify uh, uh, certain behaviors. And there's definitely ways you can do this. In fact, I've got seven slides on how to do it. So, all right, pay attention. Unconditional stimuli. Oops, did you hear that? Did you notice the difference there? I said unconditional. I will probably continue to say unconditional and conditional throughout this lecture because that's the original translation of it um, from its original uh, Russian. Um, so, or whatever the language is that it was originally come up, uh, invented in, what? I, shit, I don't even know what I'm saying. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. Uh, the idea is that uh, unconditional and conditional and unconditioned and conditioned, they're the same thing. Right? It, they mean the same thing, but uh, again, like I was actually saying, that the original translation, the most correct translation, is unconditional. But today we use the term unconditioned, so use them interchangeably. And don't worry about the fact that I'm making a fool of myself. All right. We have an unconditional stimulus, which leads to an unconditional response. Eating a nice curry. Oh, that doesn't look good. All right. Um, what is that going to do? What? Just looking at a nice curry or smelling a nice curry. What do you think that's going to do? Hmm? 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 Any ideas? All right. Well, here you go. Oh, sure. It's not going to work. <laughs> ah, there it is. You shall drool, right? <laughs> so there's the reflex. Okay. So an unconditional stimulus is going to lead to that drooling reflex. Okay. The unconditional response. Unconditioned and unconditional means you did not have to learn. You didn't have to learn anything about this. This is just automatic. It's a reflex. Okay, let's look at some others. Okay. There's that McDonald's again, and as you might realize, it's going to make you do that. No, I'm kidding. Um, but it's a it's an example, right? Let's say that you ate a bad meal or ate a rotten meal at McDonald's. Let's not pick on McDonald's food in general. Let's pick on something that may have happened. So you ate something that was um, old or it was moldy or something like that, um, and then uh, you know you puked as a result. Okay, and given the fact that it's while I'm recording this lecture, it's currently spring. And you see a nice pretty flower, and there you go. All right, you've got your allergies. So you don't have to learn that stuff. This is all automatic. Okay? This is are just reflexes. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this whole thing. So let's take a look at the next slide here. So we're going to take a condition stimulus. Now, <laughs> those of you that don't know the atmosphere have clearly not traveled to Kabul, Afghanistan. All right. No, the atmosphere is a restaurant in uh, Kabul. Um, this is a very popular hangout for expats, right? So the international folks. Uh, and it's, you know, decent food. You know, it's pretty good. You can actually get bacon there, you know. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good place. And they actually have a, uh, uh, a nice atmosphere. So there's a lot of good things about the atmosphere, but the food is one of them. So we're going to take this condition stimulus of the restaurant, okay, and we're going to pair that with the unconditioned stimulus of nice curry. Okay. The result is going to be that in the future when I drive by the atmosphere, or when you drive by the atmosphere, that you are going to salivate. Okay, So that condition stimulus now leads to the conditioned response. Notice that if you go back to that previous slide, the you know Homer salivating was actually the unconditioned response. It is, an, it is an unconditioned response if it happens if it, if it happens to the U.S. If it happens to the C.S., it's actually a conditioned response. Right? So again, the C.S. produces a C.R., a U.S. produces a, a U.R. Pairing the U.S. and the C.S., which is what you're seeing here, will, will cause that C.S. to eventually produce that conditioned response. Okay. So in other words, now we don't need the U.S. All we have to do is show me the atmosphere, and I'll start drooling. And in fact, as I'm sitting here talking about this, I'm getting quite hungry, which um, 
is kind of odd because I just had a little, you know, small little sandwich. And I, my guess is that it's because seeing this picture of our atmosphere, uh, it's making me want food, right? So it's it's a conditioned stimulus. It's working as I'm doing this lecture. And I can tell you right now that I'm going to have to go get something to eat after this um, because that's really actually making me hungry. Anyway, let's look at the next one. Okay, a conditioned stimulus, a florist, right? The sign, just the sign, the florist is going to be paired with the unconditional stimulus of the flowers. So if I go see the sign and I walk in and go see the flowers, um, and then I get my nice little reaction to that, huh, I get my conditioned response. If I do that enough, eventually, when I see a florist sign, I might sneeze, all right? Kind of cool, right? In a sense, kind of not. Uh, but that definitely is the case. So if you repeatedly pair those things, you can end up producing a reflex to something that should not produce a reflex. There's no reason a neon sign should make you sneeze unless that neon sign has been paired with an unconditioned stimulus many times. And that unconditioned stimulus, if it leads to you sneezing, then that's how it'll work. And that's absolutely natural. Right? Uh, and this happens a lot more often than, well, what, than what we might think. Okay. In fact, you can start thinking about this stuff in terms of like the golden arches. Right? So if we go back to the McDonald's example, let's look at it from a more positive perspective so I don't get sued by McDonald's because I'm putting this out on the internet. Anyway, um, the golden arch arches are paired with, uh, visually paired with really nice pictures of hamburgers. And we're just going to believe that that's really the quality of hamburger that they produce, right? So on the adverts and on the, you know, on the billboards and the TV and all that stuff. So you're going to have the golden arches and it's going to be paired with that food. That food is going to, is a visual stimulus. Um, just a, even a picture of a nice hamburger is enough to elicit a uh, salivation and maybe even a hunger response. And uh, so the, the arches paired with that picture okay, will eventually produce that hunger. And then why, I mean, why do you think the McDonald's arches are so huge? I mean, it's one of the things about them that, that, that makes McDonald's work is that it's those arches where you can see them from across town, okay, um, which is then going to make you hungry. Or it's then going to make you start to salivate. And of course, what's your first thought? I see the arches, I start salivating, or I go, hmm, I'm kind of hungry, right? And then I'm just might as well go to McDonald's and get me some McNuggets, right? Or something like that. 